The Herman Miller Embodied Chair is one of the most popular chairs in the world and also one of the most expensive chairs in the world coming in at around $1,900 US. So it's no surprise that people who wanna pick it up are constantly asking, which one should I get? Do I go for the non-gaming version or do I go for the gaming version here? Now you might think that aren't the differences just purely aesthetic, one just looks a little bit gamery compared to the other? No, there are actually quite a number of significant differences between the two and I'm gonna break them all down here for you. Let's get honest. If you wanna know right off the bat which of these two embodies you should buy, you should go for the gaming embody. Not only is it my personal favorite, but I've also had about eight people in the studio and try these chairs back to back and they all unanimously chose the gaming embody hands down over the non-gaming embody. I actually had an older gentleman today, he's a doctor, he came in because he wanted to buy an embody, but after testing the gaming one, he was like, no, it's no contest. The gaming embody is significantly nicer than the regular embody. Another huge reason to go with the gaming embody over the non-gaming embody is the price. The non-gaming embody and the base configuration with the sink fabric costs $100 more than the gaming embody with that same sink fabric. I have no idea why the non-gaming embody costs more. The plastic the build quality, everything feels identical. And ironically, it seems like you're getting more value with the gaming embody because of its plushier cushions. Both of these chairs are great chairs, and if you decide to pick up either one, please consider using my link in the description below. That really, really helps this channel a lot, really helps videos like this continue to be made, and I really, really appreciate your support. Just so that everyone knows what I'm working with, this is a gaming embody made in 2021. I'm the original owner. And then this over here is a brand new non-gaming embody. I purchased it about a month and a half ago, and this is in the sink fabric, and the color is called Nightfall. Yes, I bought this chair just for this video, so if you like that, like, subscribe, consider using my link in the description if you purchase. Really, really helps this channel a lot. This is a very expensive chair. All right, the reason why I emphasize the date and why this is a brand new chair is because it's going to matter, especially for the seat cushion, but I'll talk more about that in the seat cushion section. In terms of branding, the Herman Miller Gaming Embody is actually a collaboration between Herman Miller and Logitech. And so you're gonna see Logitech G, which is their gaming series, branding on the front of the chair, as well as a tag on the back of the chair, which is removable. On the non-gaming Embody, it's Herman Miller's own product, and so you're only gonna get a Herman Miller logo on the back of the chair. On all the gaming embodies, you have this paneled look both on the seat and on the backrest. On the seat, this gap is about a quarter of an inch each, whereas on the backrest, each of those gaps is about an inch wide. The non-gaming embody is totally smooth on the backrest and on the seat. When I measured these two chairs, I actually found that the non-gaming embody sits taller than the gaming embody by about half an inch. The backrest sits about half an inch higher, the armrest sits about half an inch higher, and the seat sits about half an inch higher over the gaming embody. Herman Miller's website says the opposite. It says that the gaming body sits a little bit higher. I actually found the opposite to be true. Now, when it comes to the seat depth, I found that both in the all the way scooched back as well as the front lip pulled out, the dimensions were identical. When it comes to colors, the non-gaming embody has a lot more color options compared to the gaming embody. The gaming embody only has four variants that you can choose from. It's the black and blue, the black and black, the white and purple, and the white and blue greenish. Whereas on the non-gaming embody, you have two fabric options, and within those fabric options, you have a bunch of color options as well. Now that brings us to our fabric options. The gaming embody, they all use the same fabric, and it's the sink fabric. Whereas on the non-gaming body, this one here that I have is the sink fabric, but they have on their online store another fabric option called the Medley. Now the Medley is a lower quality fabric, at least that's what the price seems to imply. I've never touched the Medley fabric, so I can't do a direct comparison of what that would feel like. And also keep in mind that the color options on the Medley is a lot more limited compared to on the sink fabric. I normally wouldn't talk this much about fabric colors and fabric options, except it's really important in this case if you wanna get a headrest. Now, this headrest was not made by Herman Miller, it's made by a company called Atlas Headrest, and I've tested and reviewed 100 chairs plus at this point. This is by far my favorite headrest in the world. It is phenomenal, but the reason why it's so important to consider color and fabric types is because Atlas Headrest makes a matching headrest for almost every embody out there. And when I say matching, I'm talking about the color, the fabric type, as well as the backing material and the plastic material here as well. They're all one-to-one -one matching but there are a couple options that Atlas Headrest does not make headrests for. For example, on the gaming body, there's one variant that there is no matching headrest for, and that's on the amethyst color. So there is no amethyst color headrest. Now on the non-gaming body, they make a whole bunch of headrests, but the one that I saw on Herman Miller's website that Atlas Headrest does not sell a headrest for is the Glacier Sink 
So the glacier color and the sink fabric, they do not have a headrest for that. When it comes to noise levels between the chairs, the gaming body has a notorious reputation of being squeaky. And yes, it is significantly squeakier than the non-gaming body. Now, this may not bother some of you out there. It may bother you a ton. If you're using headphones, it might not matter that much. I think where it does matter a lot is if you have other people in the room when you're sitting on these chairs. And if they're sensitive to noise, then that might be something you wanna be cognizant of when picking either of these chairs. And also keep in mind that the bigger you are, the more you're gonna to touch more points of this chair, and it means potentially more squeaking compared to smaller frame and lighter folks. The seat cushion, the back cushion, and the backrest shape are the most significant differences between these two chairs and what I think makes the gaming body hands down better over the non-gaming body. And let's start with the seat cushion. So the seat cushion here on the gaming body is significantly plushier than on the non-gaming body. Now, here's something that you need to know. The reason why I talked earlier about the date mattering for these embodies, it's because in February of 2021, Herman Miller added an additional foam layer to their non-gaming and body chairs, especially in the seat area. Now, this extra foam layer definitely helps make the chair feel more comfortable. Now, Herman Miller said that it didn't really make chairs more comfortable. I think that's not correct. I think this is by far more comfortable with that extra foam layer. However, on the non-gaming body, they actually have an additional layer of what they call their cooling gel, and it makes this thing feel significantly plushier over the non-gaming body. It's so significant that when I sit in them, even now, even to this day, when I go back between the two, this feels so much plushier, and this, you feel what they call their pixelated mesh. You feel that instantly everywhere on your legs, whereas this one, that is more hidden because of the plush, and therefore feels softer and plushier relative to the non-gaming one. Now, when it comes to the backrest cushion, very similar story. This one has a foam layer all up and down the chair. This one also has an additional foam layer all up and down the chair. Now, because of that additional foam, again, it's gonna feel plushier, softer on this backrest compared to the non-gaming and body variant. However, you can see that there are ridges here on the backrest, and these ridges are not small. This is what I would say maybe about an inch, and in that inch section, you are missing pretty much all layers of cushion. So when it comes down to this lumbar area, when you touch here, this, you can feel that plastic pad instantly. There is almost no cushioning in that lumbar area, but up above it and below it, you get significantly more cushion. Now compare that to the non-gaming body. When it comes to the entire back, you get an even layer of cushioning all throughout the chair. But even so, even with these missing pieces of foam or whatever cushioning here, the non-gaming body's back feels significantly better compared to the non-gaming body. Now, the next thing that makes them significantly different is going to be their back top shape. Now, one of the biggest complaints about the Herman Miller body, especially for those that are taller, six foot three and plus and above, <laughs> that's what plus means, the backrest kind of turns in here at the top. And these taller guys and taller girls, they mentioned that, hey, because of the inward curve of the backrest, it digs into my shoulder blades, it digs into my shoulders, and I don't love it. Well, after sitting on these two, I can tell you that there is a significant difference between the gaming body and the non-gaming body. The gaming body is actually a little bit more open and loose compared to the non-gaming body, which feels tighter. Now you might be thinking, hey, you don't know how to adjust the chair. Maybe it's because you didn't loosen the backrest enough. No, I did it totally loose and it was hands down difference between the, non, the gaming body and the non-gaming body. People who are 5'10", 5'11", who can feel it better, I'm 5'6", so I'm not as tall. So I had taller guys come in here and they said, yeah, it's, this one is definitely tighter, it's more turned in, it's more uncomfortable compared to the gaming body. Now some of you might be thinking, well, it's because this is a brand new chair and you haven't really relaxed the back yet, you haven't really broken it in. 
Keep in mind that because I'm short, I actually don't ever interact with this top part back here. The only time I interact with it is when I pull my arms back. And that was in my testing. I wanted to see if there was any difference between the chairs when I pull my arms back. And when I did, I could feel that my upper shoulder blade areas were running into this part here a lot quicker, a lot harsher than it was in the gaming body. Now the lumbar, I've noticed that I, I have a balance in body at home. This was again an older chair, February, uh, December 2020, and the balance is just the fabric. It's a more breathable fabric. They don't sell that on their online store anymore. And when I touched the lumbar and I compared it to the gaming body's lumbar, there was a difference. The Embody's lumbar, the one, the balance one I had at home, it felt like a shoe insert. It felt a little bit more rounded. It felt like these things. However, this sink Embody that I have here that is much newer, again, it's a month and a half old. When I touch and run my fingers on the lumbar, it is identical to the gaming Embody's lumbar. So at this point, I don't know when there was a change. I don't know if there was a change, maybe I'm crazy, but I could feel a significant difference with my other Embody but when I compare these two sink embodies, the lumbars feel identical. They are exactly the same. But again, because of the seat cushion, because you get more plushiness out of this chair, out of this backrest, it hides the lumbar better than it does on the non-gaming body. When I sit on the non-gaming body, I instantly feel that lumbar and it, it's, it, it can dig, it can feel uncomfortable. There are many people who don't like the embody because of the way that lumbar support feels, but on the gaming body, it is definitely better hidden because of more cushion on that backrest. Now, which of these two chairs is gonna be better for long sitting sessions and gaming sessions when it comes to heat? Well, to test that, I went and bought this $400 heat measuring gun just for this test, just for this video. So again, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Use my links when you do your shopping. That really helps this channel a lot. This is a very expensive video. <laughs> anyway, so to do this test, I sat in both chairs for 30 minutes and then got up and measured the seat booty area as well as that lower back lumbar area where I thought you made the most amount of contact with your chair. And now the gaming body says that it's got this copper infused cooling gel, which is why I think makes it more cushier compared to the non-gaming, but they call it a cooling gel. And I thought it was gonna be a bunch of marketing fluff, but to my surprise, it, it was, it, it's marketing fluff. The backrest actually proved to be hotter than the non-gaming body by a significant amount. And the seat was actually a little bit cooler compared to the non-gaming body, which was a little surprising, but a lot less Less cool compared to the non-gaming body compared to the backrest heat. Final thoughts, just like I said at the beginning, I think everyone should go for the gaming body. The extra layer of cushion makes it a lot softer and cushier compared to the non-gaming one. Now, I'm not saying that the non-gaming one isn't good. What I'm saying is that comparing these two, you just feel all of that pixelated mesh plastic all over your body compared to the gaming one. The only exception to this would be that if you're sitting in an office environment with people around you and they're sensitive to noise, then yeah, you might wanna avoid the gaming one because it does get a lot squeakier compared to the non-gaming body. That's gonna do it for this one. Again, link, please like this video, get subscribed, leave a comment down below, use my links in the description. Really appreciate your support, love you guys. Until next time, stay honest.